Hello, I'm Ross Twiddell from Cultaholic and welcome to all the WTF moments from what was the first live episode of Raw in quite some time. But quite frankly, who gives a toss about my opinions on what happened during last night's Raw? Because quite frankly, once again, none of the wrestlers should have been there. They should all be wrestling each other from home. WWE Raw, NXT and Friday Night Smackdown should all be taking place inside the team. 2K20 universe, which explains why they're all being forced to go to work, because as we all know, 2K20 is always pissing broken. WWE and the rest of the bloody wrestling companies, for that matter, let them stay home. Hit the intro. WTF! WTF! And I guess we're going to have to kick off these WTF moments for last night's Raw, which of course was live with the decision made by the Orange County Mayor who confirmed that WWE was deemed an essential business by the Governor's Office, even though it clearly bloody well isn't. That's a WTF moment, that. And I know the WWE are supposed to be facing massive pressure from the networks to meet their quota for live professional wrestling shows this year, but surely in the face of a global pissing pandemic, we can meet a compromise here, can we not? I'm worried about these wrestlers. I don't know about you at home, but I'm really worried. What the hell are these people thinking? And speaking about people who should not be out the house at the moment, WWE thought it was a great idea to fly recently deceased man, Jerry the King Lawler, to their essential professional wrestling show. Which, remember, is essential work, even though it clearly bloody well is not. Now I get that these professional wrestling personalities are larger than life within the WWE universe, but how am I WWE? Us over here in the UK, we've been in lockdown for going on a month as I'm stood here right now. Why should these human beings be treated any differently to us? We're just the same, aren't we? We're skin and bones. And then we have Big Daddy, Drew McIntyre, saying if you deserve an opportunity at the WWE Championship, you get an opportunity at the WWE Championship. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. And I know that the Big Show show is ranked number three on Netflix, or whatever that stat is. They keep shoving right in our faces every single show these days, despite the fact the Big Show show is comfortably the worst thing I've seen since I first saw two girls one cup but daddy Drew, what the hell did the big show do to deserve a wwe championship shot after wrestlemania on the raw after wrestlemania after wrestlemania and i'm sorry mvp i've got to make it a wtf moment every single time it happens with the memory of that horrible poop show match i don't know what i'm saying here that horrible crap show match you had war on mysterious on raw back in january but mvp being booked to wrestle by wwe you pissed. And then we have Jerry the King Lawler claiming that only Larkin reminds him of Cesaro. And when Jerry Lawler said this, I was thinking, yeah, you're right, Jerry. You are completely right in saying that Cesaro and Orny Larkin have similar builds. When you remember Orny Larkin, five foot ten cruiserweight, big dick Tony, not only does he have a massive willy, but also he's a six foot five brick poo house. And then sticking with Jerry Lawler, who was still speaking about Oni Larkin, Jerry said, I've got to give the guy credit, he's out there using his real name. Who would make up a name like Oni Larkin? I don't know Jerry Lawler. Somebody who has a real name like The Undertaker, or Hulk Hogan, or The Ultimate Warrior, or Edge, or Bastion Pissin' Booger. I'm just asking Jerry, what the hell's your point there, man? Sticking with Lawler, speaking about Oni Tony Lorcan once again when he says you think Alistair Black has underestimated this Orny guy? Flashbacks to Survivor Series 2019 season when Jerry Lawler was asking hard-hitting questions like is it Flash Morgan or is it Flash Gordon? And of course WWE will tell you that NXT is on the same level as both Raw and Friday Night Smackdown until the cows come home. The only problem is Jerry Lawler is stood at the front door of that cow's house with a massive gun pointed right at said cow. 
Boom! Said Jerry Lawler as he shot a cow. Now I fully understand what goes on in this professional wrestling lock. We have professional wrestling heels telling blatant pork pies, which is Cockney rhyming slang, for lies to get us no good dirty stinking marks really angry. But Zelina Vega standing there saying that United States champion Andrade has defended his title belt month after month after month after month. <laughs> and I was left asking there, Zelina Vega, what about the month and a bit between January 27th, 2020 and March the 8th, 2020, and Andrade, naughty boy. So as we saw during that match between Shayna Baszler and Sarah Logan, Shayna did that pure gnarly backwards arm stomp thingy to Sarah Logan, and despite the fact Shayna Baszler has done that to so many of her opponents during wrestling matches, Sarah, she started bloody crying and the match had to be called off. Mike Rome then gets on the microphone and says here is your winner Sarah Logan. How? Mike Rome by name speaking bollocks by nature as poor old Tom Phillips and Byron Saxton were left to pick up the pieces by explaining rightfully so that Shayna Baszler was actually the one to win that match via forfeit or via stoppage. Whatever you want to say, anything but what Mike Rome said. That was completely wrong, Mike. What are you doing with your life? More than me. Whoa! 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 The Usos like to say in their secondary careers as traffic wardens. And I'm saying whoa because Zelina Vega claimed that if you were to conjure up a WWE superstar from scratch, he would look like Austin Theory. Nah, -uh. I'm saying I disagree in the language known as Randall Keith. Orton, Austin Theory, he ain't it chief as the kids would probably say. I didn't know. But then Zelina, who was on an utter tear during her 1,400,362 appearances on this week's Raw, she then goes on to call Austin Theory the elite. And I was thinking, are there many more monikers, not Geller, <laughs> that you want to steal Zelina Vega? Do you want to start calling Austin Theory the man? Nick? From Big Mouth, Booger Red, but you don't want to mess with that last one or you will pay. So as we've already discussed during the course of this wonderfully crap video, Jerry the King Lawler should not have been on commentary during this week's episode of Monday Night Raw. But trust old Jerry to give us another fantastic example of why he should not be commentating on Monday Night Raw in the year 2020 when he called an Akira Tozawa flipping sent on thing off the ring steps and I'm going to read this out just so I get it correct he called that move a ramen noodle moonsault bit racist Jerry bit racist from you there social distancing and once again I'm asking why don't certain bits of this global pissing pandemic exist in the world of professional wrestling what are they doing there man and then we have Tom Phillips doing what Tom Phillips does best not his face fornicating the poo out of a line on commentary when he claimed that on Wrestlemania night 2 Charlotte Flair versus Rhea Ripley stole the show I mean it was very bloody good we saw that and heard all of the screaming with our ears but imagine saying Charlotte Flair versus Rhea Ripley stole the show that also saw the Firefly Funhouse match take place, Tom Phillips. There's no contest there, is there, Thomas? Now you get yourself back to hashtag Wrestling Twitter after dark. If you're a bit squeamish, do not do that hashtag on the Twitter. It's its own WTF moment, so it is. Dun, 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 dun. So next up, we saw Big Bob. Big Bob. Big Bob, Big Bob, Big Bob. Bob's Titan Tron play on the old screen thingy, which means surely Big Bob was coming down to the ring. However, Murphy's music started playing, and you know what's happened here, don't you? Kevin Dunn, who probably has nothing to do with the playing of the music during WWE shows, but who else am I going to blame, right? We don't know any more names, do we? But Kevin Dunn was obviously leaning over to hit the B button for Bobby Lashley, but before his finger got there, one of those front Piss and Nash has got there and hit the B for Buddy Murphy, which also begs the question, why is Murphy's music still stored in WWE's music library as Buddy Murphy's theme? It should just be Murphy's theme, shouldn't it? 
Easy for me to say. Sort it out, man, WWE. Yep, I wrong, wrong, wrong. Yep, I wrong, wrong. The Viking Raiders made their road debut a year ago, almost to the day, Byron Saxton claimed. Oof, remember that. Stop trying to make it seem like it was all fine and dandy, man, Byron still hurts. And speaking of the Viking experience, no, 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 I mean the Viking Raiders. They were always called the Viking Raiders, weren't they? What the hell was that at the end of their tag team match? Because whatever it was, it wasn't the bloody Viking experience. You take that move and you feel like you've been in a fight with a Viking. Just imagine, right, Mark Henry in the shower. Mark Henry finds his bar of soap on the side of the bath. He tries to do a pop-up world strongest slam to that bar of soap. Imagine what that bar of soap did down Mark Henry's torso and that's what happened with that supposed Viking experience. Mark Henry in the shower. Oh. And we end this utter travesty of a video for all the WTF moments for last night's Raw by asking a question. Kevin Owens beats Seth Rollins at WrestleMania. At WrestleMania, at WrestleMania with one of the best WrestleMania moments of recent years. But while Kevin Owens sat at home, Seth Rollins gets the WWE Championship feud. How the piss in hell does that make any sense whatsoever? I just I don't...